Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do the Nature Writing Naturally tag that was created by Emma over at A Cup of Books in honor of Springathon. Springathon is a Nature Writing Readathon that's going on right now. It is not too late to join in. I will link all the relevant details for you down in the description box below. But this tag that Emma created for the Readathon is also, of course, all about nature writing. I am going to be answering these questions slightly out of order toward the beginning of the list of questions that Emma created for this tag, she's asking for recommendations for specific types of nature books. And since I just very recently did a whole recommendations video for nature writing books that I really enjoy, I thought instead during that section I would talk about some of my highly anticipated TBR books, and I figured that would be best talked about at the end of the video. But I will be starting at the beginning, so question one is what is your favorite nature writing book or author? It is probably H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald, but you have no idea how hard it is for me to choose between this book, The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery, and Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. We're talking about three of my all-time favorite books, and all three of them feature nature writing. But I have such a soft spot for this book. It's the book that really turned me into a bird nerd. I've seen Helen MacDonald speak here in Pittsburgh. She's fantastic. I love everything that she does. So we'll go with this one. The next question I'm taking on after my rearrangement of the questions is why do you love nature writing? I have always been fascinated by the natural world. My first love was animals. There was a long period of my life where I thought I was going to go to school to be a vet. Obviously I didn't end up going down that path, but my interests have expanded into other arenas over time. I took as many ecology classes as I could in school. I started in high school and then moved on to college. I ended up taking science classes I didn't even need to take just because I I wanted to take them. And even in my life right now, I have my own little garden. I love watching those plants grow. I love watching the birds in our neighborhood. I will probably take up bird watching here in the not too distant future. There is so much beauty and complexity within the natural world. I think I love learning about it so much because there's so much going on that we can't see. Like there are all these cycles and systems going on right underneath our noses. It's just that they're not apparent when we look at something. I find that all endlessly fascinating. The next question is describe the nature around where you live. I live in Western Pennsylvania, more specifically in the city of Pittsburgh. We are separated from the central and Eastern parts of the state by the Allegheny Mountains, which you have to pass through if you are going over to that end of the state. I recently did that. You have to go through four very long tunnels as you are going through the mountains. The climate over here is very strange. Pittsburgh is in the Ohio River Valley climate zone, meaning that we don't get the same types of weather as the central and eastern parts of the state, nor the northern parts of the state. So if you head up toward Lake Erie, it's an entirely different climate. We get a ton of rain over here. It is nearly always gray. It's almost like the mountains prevent us from getting any sun. We actually get fewer sunny days per year than Seattle does, hence my ghostly pallor. If you do not take vitamin D supplements when you are a Pittsburgh resident, you're doing something wrong. But the state of Pennsylvania is absolutely beautiful. All over the state, it is beautiful. It is very hilly in most places, and the city of Pittsburgh is no exception. We actually have some of the steepest inhabited roads in the entire country. There is a reason why so many of our neighborhoods end in hill. I think Pennsylvania is the most beautiful in the autumn because we get all the beautiful foliage, but that's my favorite season, so I'm biased. It's also very beautiful this time of year in the spring when all the trees start blooming and the bird activity is really high. We have so many cool birds around here. I see a ton of American robins. They are everywhere around here. We also have several mating pairs of northern cardinals. There was actually one year, I think it was two years ago, where I found two fledgling cardinals who had fallen out of their nest after a bad storm, and my husband and I had to race them to a wildlife rescue across town. There are some blue jays who zip around here. I've seen several different types of sparrow. We do have some black capped chickadees. Those are adorable. There is a very sassy woodpecker who lives around here, as well as a very opinionated murder of crows. I've also seen quite a few birds of prey around this area. There's one that landed out back. I didn't get a picture of it, but I'm pretty sure it was a kestrel. And then last year, there was a wild turkey who liked to hang out around here. I was not her biggest fan because she liked to go after my jalapeno plant. 
and I really didn't appreciate that. So I would normally just try to chase her away. There was one night when we had some friends over for a dinner party and they got a nice little show of me chasing this turkey down our driveway. We also have some squirrels and some chipmunks that I've seen on occasion. There was a groundhog who was living under our porch for a period of time. I know there are some mice around because they on occasion make their way in here and the cat is very interested in finding them. And then finally we have some deer who like to wander around. I don't have much love for them either considering they like to trample on my garden. So after that long-winded answer let's move on to actually talk about some books. As I mentioned Emma had a whole bunch of questions looking for recommendations for specific types of nature books but instead I wanted to talk about some of my TBR books so let's do that. While I have not read any of the books I'm about to talk about I am highly anticipating them. So when Emma asks for a book about plants I will answer with The Tulip by Anna Pavard. This book is all about the tulip flower and everything it has inspired. Don't get me wrong, I think tulips are absolutely beautiful, but I never knew how obsessed people were with them. I know the Dutch in particular really love their tulips. I just know that after reading The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert, I want to read all things botanical. A book about animals on my TBR is The Dragon Behind the Glass by Emily Voigt. This book is about an ultra rare and highly coveted fish that people will spend a whole lot of money to get their hands on. This book skyrocketed to the top of my priorities list when some people reminded me of this book in the comment section of my non-murder true crime recommendations video. It's one of those books that mixes natural history with true crime. So I really need to read this one. Next up is a TBR book all about water slash the sea and for this one I'm choosing The Outlaw Ocean by Ian Urbina. This one is all about oceanic crime. I know this one probably more largely deals with human actions upon seaworthy vessels than it does with the sea itself, but I am sure there is going to be a discussion of the sea and her many different moods within this book. I was really hoping this book would be on the Bailey Gifford shortlist so I could read it and talk about it in my coverage of the Bailey Gifford shortlist but that didn't happen. And then I was hoping to read this one for the booktube prize and it didn't make the long list, but it's still a priority book for me. A TBR book about birds is The Hidden Lives of Owls by Lee Calvez. I have always been so fascinated by owls and in this book the author talks about nine different types of owl and she doesn't just talk about the science relating to them, she also talks about the spirit of them. This also has blurbs from Cy Montgomery and Thor Hansen, so a priority book for sure. And finally a TBR book about travel and for that I will choose An Age of License by Lucy Nisley. This is actually the last graphic novel I have left to read from Lucy Nisley. This one is essentially a journal of her travels in Europe when she was on book tour in 2011. I won't lie about it, I've been kind of holding off on reading this one because I don't want to have read the entirety of Lucy Nisley's catalog without knowing when the next one is coming out. So I will read this one, I just don't know when. The next question made a good segue, I thought, and that's what nature writing book are you most excited for on your TBR? Vesper Flights by Helen MacDonald, of course. I do actually have an early copy of this one. I'm doing my best to restrain myself and not start it too early since this book is not due to come out until August and I want to have it fresh in my mind when I review it, but this is going to be a collection of essays all about the connections that humans have with nature and I'm positive that it's going to be incredible. The next one is a similar question, what nature writing book are you most excited about that you don't have access to yet? I actually just recently placed a small order through Better World Books, which is an amazing site, highly recommend them, but it hasn't arrived yet so I don't have access to this book yet. Within that order is The Boilerplate Rhino by David Quammen. This is actually a collection of 26 of his best columns that he wrote for Outside Magazine back when he used to have a regular column in Outside Magazine. Now that I've read Spillover and I've seen for myself how amazing his writing is. I'm very eager to read more of it. I do own a few of his books, but I'm definitely eager to own a whole lot more of them. And the final question in this tag asks me to do a shout out to a channel that I know reads nature writing. I am so excited for the opportunity to once again recommend Andrea from Infinite Text. A little over a year ago she did a nature writing recommendations video. I highly recommend you check out that video and that you check out her channel in general. She's awesome. So that was my take on the Nature Writing Naturally tag. Thank you so much to Emma for creating this tag and for tagging me in it. I had a ton of fun. I know many different people in our community who read Nature Writing have already done this tag to usher in the event, but if you have not yet done this tag and you're interested in doing it, please consider yourself tagged. I'm tagging you. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below, but you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media and 
and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.